Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to another baking vlog. You all seem to enjoy my Easter baking vlog and this actually all happened within the same weekend as that so you'll see some similar shots. But in today's video, I'm going to be showing you all the things that I made for my niece and nephew's birthday, which was really just a three-tiered cake and the sugar cookies. But when you compile it with all those other things that I was doing at the same time, it was a lot. And I did try to keep things fairly simple for my niece and nephew. Now, their birthdays are less than a month apart, but not super close together. However, my niece and nephew begged begged to have their birthdays together, which I thought was so cute. And also, this probably isn't going to last long. I'm sure as they get older, they're going to want to do their own separate things. So it was kind of fun combining two things into one. I had some leftover buttercream from another project, but it wasn't quite enough buttercream. So you can see my frustration here as I'm trying just to finish crumb coating this cake because my other plan for the other tiers was just to cover it with ganache. I actually end up making a whole bunch of buttercream later Later on because I have so many cupcakes to do, but I was sad that I had to end up doing that. For this one here, I ended up coating it in ganache and filling it with ganache. My ganache was a little bit thin, but I never worry too much because I know that I am going to be layering a lot on the outside, which is going to give me enough ganache flavor. By the way, those were all the cakesicles that I made, and none of the cake pops actually made it to the party, so that's a sad time, but I do have a bunch of cake pops in my fridge right now, which reminds Reminds me, I should give those away to either my staff or my husband's staff. We shall see who are going to be the lucky recipients of the magic wand cake pops. My ganache was also doing that little slidey annoying thing. Sometimes this happens if I use coverture instead of just chocolate chips. Coverture, although has such a wonderful taste and can do so many great things, does take a really, really long time to solidify back up. So just a little tip for you. This was the next day, and yes, I'm wearing the same shirt. Oftentimes, if I bake in a shirt, I tend to bake in that shirt for a couple of days. I don't know why. I don't tend to sweat that much when I'm baking, so I feel like it's still clean, and I'm wearing an apron, so it's all good. Anyway, I was crumb coating this with Italian meringue buttercream, which I was also going to use for the cupcakes, so it wasn't a total waste that I made this much buttercream just to do this eight inch cake. I also wanted to even out my ganache a little bit more because it was doing that slidey thing as I mentioned and I know with buttercream I can even things out way more quickly so I decided to forego doing that thing with the ganache and this also allowed me to save my ganache for the cupcakes which ended up working out perfectly. One thing I can say about bulk baking, although of course it can be stressful because you're making so many things, you tend to make a lot of things like buttercreams and fillings, and those are always great to have on hand. When I am on a baking spree, I really don't like to waste any time, so I make sure to plan things out to a T so that I can utilize my time the best way possible. So while those were in the fridge, just chilling out and being really, really stiff so they would be easy to decorate, I decided to get going on the sugar cookies. I base iced all of them, and then of course I airbrushed all of them, and then I went ahead and piped on all of those details. And as you can see, things are a mess. We've got a lot of cameras going on. Ollie is doing her filming. I'm doing my thing. We had dinner and now finally here we are back to the cake. One thing I also did to save space was I asked my sister to come on over and pick up all of the sugar cookies that were needed for the party the next day so that she could let them dry at her place where there was much more room and much less chance of things getting wrecked. You never know when buttercream is going to go flying about or when cornstarch is going to go everywhere and then all of a sudden your beautiful cookies are no more. As I was doing all this decorating and still running out of space, it was making me incredibly nervous for the time when I am going to be moving into a house that is half this size. Although the kitchen is not super, super small in my new place, it's a fairly good sized kitchen. I don't have two kitchens anymore, and uh, I just am a little bit nervous that I won't be able to pull off the types of baking adventures that I've been able to pull off here, but I will make do. That's just my, my inner fear feelings coming out. Oh, by the way, if you saw my short about me giving away my cookie cutters that I don't use, if you can believe it, if you've seen my cookie cutter wall, you know how many cookie cutters I have. But if you can believe it, I found an extra, I don't know, I think around 200 cutters that I hadn't put away yet on my wall. I am just shocked. I've had a lot 
of companies just send me things, not quite a PR package like in the beauty world, but I've had a lot of baking companies send me various cutters and I can't believe that some of them I have never even used. So I definitely am still trying to work on how I'm going to be doing that giveaway. Anyway, back to the cake. So Alia was sitting there for a while and she realized, hey, I've been sitting here for a while. I should probably get up. But you know, I never really like to push her because she's just doing this out of the goodness of her heart. So if she wants to sit there, I say, let her sit there. Anyway, I had to do a half and half cake, which I actually don't think I've made before. So it was very interesting. I kind of treated it more like a carved cake. So I didn't do the traditional way of covering a cake. Instead, I covered it all in one piece as you saw for that lime green portion, and then I sectioned it off for the Spider-Man portion. When I started the cake and was visualizing the cake in my head, I was so excited for the Tinkerbell side, but as I got going with the Spider-Man side, it just felt like I knew what I was doing more, so I ended up kind of freezing up when it went to the Tinkerbell section. And as I was doing all of that, Alia was glittering all of these beautiful cake pop wands, which I am so sad to say just did not make it to the party table. Unfortunately, this often happens, I find, with the cake pops and cakesicles, because really we make the cake pops and cakesicles to save on scraps. Now they're not going to go to waste, but like I said, we're just going to gift these away. But come on, how cute are these? I really, really loved the gold ones, but the silver ones were beautiful too. We did use Coverture chocolate for these, so it took so long for these to actually dry and bless Alia's soul for doing that because it, it really was very annoying. When you don't dip into candy melts, it can take a long time. I have made a lot of Spider-Man cakes in my day. I have made them pretty much starting from the beginning of my cake career. Spider-Man has lived on. So I had a lot of ideas in my head. I wanted to go fairly simple for both sides. I knew that a bunch of four, five, and six-year-olds were going to be eating this cake, so they weren't going to appreciate every little detail that I might have put into this. I also knew that the birthday party was going to be at Chuck E. Cheese, and I've had many a birthday at Chuck E. Cheese for my own kids, as well as been to the ones for my niece and nephew before, so I kind of knew that you know, the cake cutting part is so quick and barely anybody really sees the cake. So I just wanted to keep things simple. I wanted it to be something that my niece and nephew looked at and loved, but I also didn't want to stay up until four in the morning making fondant figurines. Piping this part of the cake was probably the most stressful part. Doing straight lines that are dropping down the side of a cake is incredibly difficult, but I did manage to make it through. I made royal icing and dyed it black. I just find it a lot easier to work with in this instance than buttercream. And also dyeing black buttercream, it's just a little bit more that goes into it, I find. Whereas when I do it with royal icing, it tends to develop the color a little bit better. After I put these little gold edible pearls in, Alia was like, oh, what are those? And I thought that they looked like little stars or maybe lights, you know, being cascaded among New York City. I don't know. I just thought that it worked and I needed that little pop of something on this side. I did steam my cake just a little bit more after this to get rid of the excess cornstarch, but always be really careful when steaming your cake and having royal icing decor on there that's not completely dry or having these edible pearls with a shine on there because it can wreck it and it creates this matte finish on the edible pearls. By the way, if my voice sounds a little bit different, it's because I filmed this portion of the voiceovers on a completely different day, and unfortunately, now I have strep, and I am trying to recover from it. It seems like I get this every single year, and it always seems to fall around tax season time, and incidentally, when I'm putting on a bunch of musicals, so I guess my body is just extra stressed and more susceptible. That's enough of the segment about Ashley's health. Let's get back to the cake. So I did airbrush this a little bit. I really didn't feel like the cake needed the airbrush. However, I wanted to make sure that the cake matched the cookies that I made. So I added in a little bit of that airbrushing. I put on a bunch of different fondant flowers. It really brightened up the cake. Originally, I did want to put on some fondant figures, but I was getting so exhausted by this point, And I also needed to find a way to tie in the cookies and the cake together. So I just decided to go with the silhouette and really be careful with the way I placed this edible glitter. 
By the way, if you try to place edible glitter onto dry fondant, it is not going to work, especially if you used cornstarch to roll out your fondant. You will need to steam the cake and then place on that edible glitter fairly soon after. I struggled with this number six at the bottom. I was in a rush and I really couldn't get things layered properly for some reason. I think it was because I steamed it a little bit and then obviously that's gonna make that luster dust super difficult to adhere to. Decided to go with the purple six, which I actually felt like went a lot better. And I love how on this side of the cake, you really can't see the Tinkerbell at all. Now, when you flip it to the other side, you can see a little bit of that Spider-Man. I wish that I had just a little bit more green fondant because then I think that would have been more perfectly split in half. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!